mail comes if it doesn't say Blue Cross or I'm trying to think what else I get.
<laughs> I sure don't. <laughs> still, still haven't got any gifts. No. Oh, that'll win. <laughs> all right, unmute myself. All right, seven o'clock. If we're gonna all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United, United States of America, of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Vaughn Crooks? Here. Benedetti? Here. Cabo Watton? Present. Pate? Here. Perucci? Here. Rodriguez? Here. Rezepa? Here. Quorum present, Mayor Rezepa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item we have on the agenda is the minute approval of the June 5th, 2023 so regular support. meeting. It has been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Uh, next, we have public comment regarding items on today's agenda. This portion of public comment is reserved exclusively for items on the, today's agenda with another opportunity uh, for public comment uh, later in the, uh, for all other comment later on in the meeting. Uh, I'd ask that anyone wishing to speak uh, via Zoom, please uh, use the raise hand function under either participants or reactions. Um, but uh, for all others, uh, we still would uh, like to begin with your name and address, limit your comment to five minutes, and please direct all questions through me. Seeing none on Zoom or in person, we'll keep moving along. Thank you. Uh, so next up, we have uh, under general, the 33rd District Court Annual Financial Report uh, for fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022. And I will defer to our court delegate, Councilwoman Bond Crooks. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to receive and place on file the 33rd District Court Financial Report dated December 21st, 2023. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Uh, next, we have under groups and organizations, the St. Paul Lutheran Church Healthy Trenton 5K and One Mile Run Walk. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you don't mind taking this one. Sure. Okay, before you, St. Paul's Lutheran Church is again asking to hold their Healthy Trenton 5K and One Mile Run Walk. And this will be on Saturday, July 22nd and from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., and then also from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, this has been approved by the police department, and they're looking for your approval. I would so move. Some support. support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Clerk. Uh, next, we have a couple items from our city administrator. Uh, first one here to reschedule our regular council meeting of Monday, July 3rd to Wednesday, July 5th. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Yes, I'm just asking to move the co regular council meeting from Monday, July 3rd to right. Wednesday, July 5th, just to work around the holiday, work a little better for everybody's schedule and ability to attend. So, so moved. Support. Or, moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Next up, uh, we also have the Civic Plus renewal. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, before you have the Civic Plus renewal, Civic Plus handles a couple aspects, but primarily they do uh, our Facebook, or our, I'm sorry, our uh, website hosting, and uh, they have some other services that they've brought along with their um, package deal, but um, this would be a renewal in the amount of $6,350.20 <coughs> for website hosting and services. So moved. Move, Support. Oh, moved and supported. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Councilman Campbell Uh Dean, is this a separate company from, I, I think, our email or our internet company, the IT Plus? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. All right, next we have from our city attorney, ordinance number 813, 814, and 815 regarding salaries for the city clerk, treasurer, and assessor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is the first reading of three ordinances prepared for the three officers uh, for a four-year period being initiated after the elections. The reading sets the salaries for the treasurer, city assessor, and city clerk to be elected only in the fall. In the fall. The controller has prepared the adjustment and received approval for the terms of this first reading and this budget uh, as part of as part of the overall budget, which the council has already approved. So moved. Support. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. 
Uh, next from the city clerk, we have the 123.net Inc. Metro Act Permit. Okay, thank you. 123.net is coming before us to ask to extend the Metro Act permit. And this has been re reviewed by our city engineer. And they're looking for a renewal to extend it five years, expiring May 1st, 2028. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Councilman Cabot. Is this um, is this just for city of right of ways or w what does this cover? That's correct. It's it's in it's for in the city, but however, it doesn't um, exempt them from regular construction permits if they're doing any other type of work. This okay. is just for the overall permit. That's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. Yep. Thank you, Dean. Cool. Thank you, Councilman. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Madam Controller, uh, budget amendments for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023. Thank you, Mayor. Before you, I have the budget amendments for the quarter ending June 30th, 2023. Um, I have attached the general ledger numbers with detailed explanations for your approval. I would so move. Support. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, from our DPS director, Mr. Sargent, a contract award and execution of agreements for the janitorial services contract. Thank you, Mayor. On May 1st, 2023, this council authorized the preparation of specifications to advertise and receive competitive bids for the next three-year janitorial services contract for our municipal buildings. Advertising was done on BidNet and bids were due June 6, 2023. Five bids were received. Bids were publicly opened and read at that time. Puro Clean of Wyandotte, Michigan submitted the lowest responsible and responsive bid. After reference checks and a meeting with the contractor, I am seeking authorization to award the contract and execution of the agreements to Puro Clean in the amount of $84,640.60 per year. The contract term is for three years, expiring June 30th, 2026. Funds are budgeted in the facility's contractual services account. So moved. Support. Support. Has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Oh, Councilwoman Bond Crooks? Um, yeah, I'd like to talk about this a little further. Um, I know that this comes up, you know, every three years, and over the years, this has been, this thing has been kind of a bone of contention with the uh, you know, bid process. Um, do you, can you give us a number of what the former uh, DRC has been paid over the last three years? Uh, this past year was a hundred and twelve thousand. Okay, um, and so the low the low bid comes in at eighty four thousand, and I I have a problem with this kind of stuff because anybody can come in with a low bid and outbid who's doing the job now. So I have a problem with I mean if they weren't doing a good job, and uh, you know we we saw reason to get rid of them or whatever then. Uh, I'm pretty loyal to, to the long-term contractors who've been working with the city, you know, and I, I have a problem with bringing in somebody who, okay, they, they know, everybody knows what is being bid by each other, you know, in the past contractors. So I have a problem with this. Um, I, I'm just not ready to vote on this and uh, take away a job of somebody who's been with us, been with us through COVID, been with us through a lot of, you know, tumultuous times when it's been tough so I just have and it's hard to get help and I just have a problem with somebody coming in low low bidding this and uh, we just award it to them without and you know when DRC has been doing a great job for us it's kind of like you know the cutting grass contracts and everything else that you know we decided to go out for you know contracting our grass and uh, that didn't work out real well for us so I think we do everything better in house so I just have a problem with this, that I, and I definitely want a roll, a roll call vote on this, uh, or, or maybe refer it to a study session or something where we can talk more about this kind of thing. You know, the towing is another situation we've been through, and people come in and low bid it, and, you know, do you get rid of somebody who's doing the towing for 40, 50 years? I mean, this kind of thing kind of bothers me. So I just think that... Uh, you know, we ought to re really reconsider. So the, the reason actually that we even had to discuss this was because the, the current contract holder um, asked for a, uh, an increase in their contract that would have required us to actually bid it out. 
Um, like it wasn't something that we could award to them. So I believe it looks like, yeah, they came in about 140,000 um, for their new bid. Right. Um, and we're actually the highest of the five. And to, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe there were some issues with some of the departments here too, Dean, if you wanna. Yeah, to, um, personally, you know, DRC has been adequate. Um, they actually have done some um, good things. However, it has not been without uh, challenges and issues that have come come along the way and we just managed to work through them but this um, the if this were a few thousand dollars difference or whatever I could see but it's they were the number five bidder in this case and you're talking over 40 percent difference in their hmm. in their costs um, does that surprise you though Dean I mean when you when you know the other contractors well you know, I won't I know what is I won't being paid. I won't get into the specifics of it but after going through everything um, am I surprised yes but it's uh, pleasantly surprised and um, I, I there's I haven't found any reason to not go with it, it honestly to be polite if if council had an issue with it going out to bid, this issue should have been brought up before it was sent out to bid. Once we go through the public bidding process, we, we need to be extremely careful about dismissing bids just because we want to do business with someone that should have been done before it was publicly posted because we, that's, we won't have people come in and bid any of our other work if we go through a bidding process and throw out the bids to just go with whoever we prefer. So No, it's not a matter of me preferring someone. I mean, you know, that's not the case. The case is, is these other four bidders who bid jobs here know what the former contractors have been paid because they do their homework. So they can all come in with lower bids, and they've done this to us for years. But I just, now, and let me say this, if, if DRC is not doing a good job or whoever is doing I'm not going to get into the specifics of that. No, I'm, and that's I'm not, not either. A, that, it, but I can guarantee you um, the bid process was followed. It was adequate. This body decided that it needed to go out to bid. Well, of course, because we usually bid the contracts every three years or five years, whatever we allow. Well, I mean, we, that is... We were coming normal. off of two extensions with DRC. Right. And it needed to, it needed to go to bid. So I... I you know, council person... I don't think that's... So I... Well, whatever, whatever you, you know, whatever you decide. I, I don't know all the particulars, you know, but... And I don't want to say who's doing a good job, who's not. I don't know. But I just, you know, I hate taking somebody's job away from them like that. And, you know, it's just, that's how I feel about the whole thing. Yeah. So I think Alan wanted to say something, then I'll go to Scott, then Nelson, just to piggyback on that. You know, I, 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 I like staying with the same people. I stay with an accountant who does a lousy job for me because he's been my accountant. But the reality is we're a public institution. We're a public, we're public yeah, agency. Uh, yeah. And if we didn't have <coughs> a low bidder in this case, you may you pay more on the add-on for the fees for the attorneys in the lawsuit. Well, yeah, we've but Al, we've not always gone to the low bidder for everything. I mean, you have in, to justify it. Right? it, it we, to really well, sure, it. sure we do. But I'm just I'm just saying some of this kind of stuff bothers me, and uh, but I don't know all the details of you know, whatever. So, uh, Councilman Cabalat and then Councilman Perugia. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so. Dean or Kevin, one or the other, um, do we have, are there like um, performance bond requirements for this contract or is there a default language in this contract in the event that the contractor does not um, uphold, you know, and, and to whatever level you set that, whether it's, it's, you know, grossly negligent or just, you know, they're just in default of the contract that we can cancel the contract? And The what? contract is, is in your packet it's very simple it's one page and yes we had our attorney insert so that we can we can escape from it if it doesn't work out um, I I would expect over the first 30 days that they're going to be growing pains um, 
just like we would with any other contractor getting used to our buildings and the security and all the other things that are going to come up. But yes, we have the ability to get out of this contract if it doesn't work. Correct. Is there any performance language in there, like performance bond type language or anything like that, Dean? Or no, you wouldn't normally have that on okay. on a job like this because it's, it's not a so it's small. not an end to end job. I mean, right. we would include a performance bond if they were building a road for us, but when it's actually a uh, service orientated, you wouldn't normally have a. Um, yeah, I had when I was in on the other side. We have bonds all the time. Well. Right, if you're talking about trash pickup, but you wouldn't, for a normal service that you would provide, you, we have the ability yeah. to cancel. We, we pay have the month. ability to secure ourselves. We're, we're right. secure. And we pay, we pay by the month. Yeah. So if it doesn't work, you cancel the contract and you hire someone else. Okay. So, yes. And, Councilwoman, I, I understand. I You know I spent a lot of time in that world, too, and, hey, there was many times people – looked at my contracts that I held on on behalf of my country on my company and they knew exactly what price I was at when I was going into mm -hmm. it. I I understand both sides of it. Yeah. I really do. So Yeah, it is. That's it's it is part of being a contractor for local government. That's the risk you know that you take when you step out there. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Perry. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you bringing it to light timber, but my feeling is that DRC had a chance to put a bid in just like five other people and nobody knew what to put in they might have known what was their last contract but they had an opportunity so mm -hmm. if they chose to put that bid in they run the risk of where they're at now so I, I don't think I should show that much pity on somebody when they had a chance but I understand the loyalty perspective I appreciate that well and and here's the other side of that too is I mean they've been doing it for he said like a hundred and twenty thousand and so they're not gonna underbid and go down to 70 80,000 90,000 they're not gonna you know because you have to pay your employees more money and there's more benefit costs and this and that so they're obviously going to have to you know pay more money to their to, to get the service I I don't know is I see all sides of it and it's it's a tough call it's taxpayer money and it's a tough call and I don't want to waste taxpayer money but I just think sometimes this is not so cut and dry so thank you <clears throat> Thank you. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, so, Councilwoman, did you want to roll call? Uh, no, because it's not going to do any good. I just wanted to voice my opinion and let people know how I feel about the loyalty to people who have contracted in our city. And I'll continue to stay loyal to, you know, our own workers first and then contracts later. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. All right. Seeing no further discussion, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, Chief Hawkins for two items here. Uh, first up, we have a purchase of 36 new Glock duty pistols and accessories. Take it away, Chief. Well, thank you, Mayor Rizepa and members of the council. The Trent Police Department has been utilizing Sig Sauer 40 caliber handguns for the last 11 years. The general service life for a duty handgun is approximately 10 years. We are overdue for new firearms here at the Police Department. The switch to Glock comes after research and testing from our firearms instructors Glock handguns are durable and cost effective. They're also easier to use and maintain same trigger pull pressure as opposed to the Sig Sauer. Glock pistols are now being used by the training academies for pre-service recruits and are in the hands of approximately 70% of surrounding departments. Additionally, each Glock handgun comes with additional grip fittings to accommodate smaller hands if needed. Also, the switch to a 9mm round instead of the 40 caliber makes duty and practice ammo readily available and less expensive to train. With the transition to Glock, we're requiring a red dot optic sight and mounted flashlight. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Greeno has a research paper and staff and command showing the importance and increased accuracy when a handgun is equipped with a red dot sight. This purchase includes all Glock 9mm handguns equipped with red dot optic, a mounted flashlight, and a retention level 2 holster for safety. The safety of our police officers and the public is paramount in the purchase. I'm seeking your approval for the purchase of 36 Glock handguns to include the red dot optics, mounted flashlights, and holsters from my deal vendor, Michigan Police Equipment, at the cost of $43,090.20. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Councilman Perugia. <laughs> 
Yes, Chief. Um, I see the buyback on the old weapons, but with it being a different caliber, what are you doing with the ammo? Are they taking that back too, paying for that, or how's that going to work out? So talking to our firearms instructors, they will take some of the duty ammo back because we don't need the duty ammo anymore, and we'll swap that out for nine. We also, some of the practice ammo, we do want to retain for officers that would buy their gun or for Leosa, for all the retirees that come in. We have provided that ammo for a long time, so we will keep some of that ammunition on hand. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thanks, Chief. Next, we've got uh, purchase of 22 new body cameras from LensLock. Again, as you may be aware, the Trenton Police Department has been utilizing a trial body camera for the last four years. The device is a cell phone that attaches to the outer carrier vest and transmits data through city-paid Verizon cell phone plan on 22 devices. The data plan is paid by the city for a cost of $11,000 per year. <coughs> The trial period was agreed to several administrations ago in 2019, and the agreement included the body cam service at no charge due to the fact the company was testing this type of technology. The main goal of body cams is to provide footage from an officer's perspective, which keeps the police and citizens accountable for their actions. The cell phone devices that we are currently using do not give our department the professional tools that are needed to enhance trust and accountability with our community or with the Wayne County prosecutor. Of the 43 communities in Wayne County, we're the only police department that d does not utilize a real body cam device. The devices we currently use cannot withstand the heat, the cold, or rugged nature of police work. We have the need for new professional body cameras for each officer on the road. I'm seeking your approval for the purchase of 22 body cameras from LensLock in Tampa, Florida. The cost of this purchase is $17,801 per year on a five-year contract. LensLock is one of the three main companies in the body cam industry, and all include warranties, cloud storage, and redaction software in the price. The quote has been attached for reference. This proposal has been reviewed by legal counsel as well as the termination of the current contract with Equature. And additionally, there is no charge uh, for termination of the Verizon plan. I'm seeking your approval for the purchase of 22 body cameras at 17801. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. All right, next we have uh, from our Mayor Pro Tem, uh, non-union wage adjustments. Thank you. I'd like to move to authorize the city controller to make the following <coughs> budget amendment increase. The non-union and permanent part-time wage scale in the amount of 3%, effective July 1st, 2023. So moved. Support. Support. Uh, it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank, Thank you. you. And next up uh, from our city administrator, uh, closed session request. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A request uh, uh, that you recess into closed session to discuss discuss labor negotiations and uh, litigation. So moved. Support. Right. Moved and supported. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, we'll do a roll call, and we are going to do that uh, just in here, actually, mm -hmm. too. So, Madam Clerk. Benedetti. Yes. Cable Watton. Yes. Hate. Yes. Perugi. Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Rosepa? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will uh, immediately recess and be back shortly.
We'll reconvene at 7.59 p.m. Uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two late items. Uh, the first is to move to approve the tentative agreement effective July 1st, 2023 and pending the locals of the locals official ratification negotiated with the TPOAM and allow the mayor to e execute a new contract. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. And I also would like to move to approve the tentative contract agreements with the Trenton Inspectors and Lieutenants Association and with the Trenton Police Officers Association. Support. 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 Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank, Thank you. All. Um, Madam Clerk, did we have any other late items? No, we do not. All right, thank you. Um, and I will kick it back to you, uh, Councilwoman Pate, uh, for your disbursements and statements and then our reports. Yes, sir, thank you. I'd like to move to approve the authorized disbursements of June 20th, 2023 in the amount of $997,400.42. Sure. Moved and <laughs> supported. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moved and supported. Is there any other discussion? I at the same time. Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. I'd like to move to approve the financial summary, May 31st, 2023. The schedule of investments and cash on hand, May 31st, 2023. The City Beautiful Commission minutes, May 3rd, 2023. The Civic Commission minutes of May 1st, 2023. The Downtown Development Authority minutes of April 13th, 2023. The Traffic Safety Commission minutes of May 3rd, 2023. Fire Department Monthly Report, May of 2023. And the Police Department Monthly Report of May 2023. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, other council business now. Um, I think we're going to be very, very brief, but uh, Dean, if you don't mind uh, providing us with uh, just a quick update on, on Riverside, I've had some folks ask, and things have been obviously in a bit of limbo, and we've had to do a lot of uh, legal maneuvering and closed sessions, but I think that uh, we're in a lot better spot than we have been um, in terms of progress. So, Dean. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So uh, the current status is uh, the receiver has been um, given um, much broader, um, actually virtually total control over the site um, and the funds and everything that um, move around within it. Uh, all the uh, execution of the contracts will be signed by and overseen by the receiver, which is all um, good news for us. Um, as of uh, this week, um, today, the heavy equipment is back on site with a, from a different contractor. Um, the, I expect the contracts to be executed in the next day or two with the receiver. Um, but it's a really good act of faith that the contractor is already on site, so um, putting his equipment on it before the contract's even signed, so that's a good thing. Um, short, by the end of the week, we anticipate the demolition uh, permit being applied for. The Eagle notifications have already happened um, that all have to be part of the demolition. What we expect is in the very near term over the next couple of weeks there will be more activity on the site the basement will be um, re finally remediated um, it's still relatively dry there's uh, um, three four inches of water in there which is dry by that standard um, and then the interior of the structures i hate to say will be scavenged but they'll be scrapped uh, as much as they can from the inside and then, uh, then the buildings will uh, come down. Um, the last time uh, the demolition happened and then there was piles of rubble sitting there for quite a while as they sorted through it and did the scrapping kind of in the other direction. So this should um, at least speed the process of when they demolish it, the stuff will be trucked off site. Um, we would hope and anticipate much quicker. So it's all good news um, I'm giving you the best dates and times that I have right now um, but those change as we all know so um, be patient but um, I'm very optimistic we, we we got a very good court order issued by the uh, by the judge and and everything is really heading towards getting back on track 
Thank you, Dean. I appreciate that. So uh, good to see progress there again. Um, equipment back on site and should be moving along. Um, and then the only other item that I had that I just wanted to let folks know about, I guess, is uh, more bad news. Probably should have led with that. And normally I make Dean do the bad news. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I know uh, it was probably about nine, ten months ago now, um, DTE told us that they were going to remove the tracks on King Road that uh, went in, into their property that uh, lead to nowhere now and do nothing but just uh, cause some extra bumps in your trips down King Road. Um, and after we've uh, inquired several times about when that is supposed to be happening, they informed us uh, last week, week prior, uh, that they are not actually going to remove them anymore. They are going to repair them, um, which makes about as much sense as, uh, to me as it does to everyone else, um, but apparently they feel that that is the cheaper option. Um, so yes, we are um, very displeased about that, to put it lightly, but uh, that's, I guess, been a long-running theme here. So uh, outside of that, I don't have anything uh, else other than I look forward to seeing uh, many people uh, coming downtown this weekend for the summer festival and the fireworks, so please make sure um, you check out all the parking guidelines um, and are in accordance with those. You don't get ticketed, towed, things like that. Utilize the shuttles if possible. Um, parking is going to be very, very difficult and very limited, um, and especially Saturday night with the fireworks. Um, so just, uh, yeah, hope everyone has a great time, and I will look forward to seeing many of you there. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else, so I believe uh, first up tonight we have uh, Councilwoman Pate. Oh, thank you. Um yeah, I'd like to just add that, you know, we should all be very patient and cooperative as we can with um, everybody working the fair, especially Saturday night. Um, just, you know, pack your extra patience, you know, get down to the fair, make the most of it, stay to eat, find a nice spot to rest and watch the fireworks, and hopefully everything will go well. Um, I also wanted to thank Krista uh, Eubank Schaefer. She invites all of uh, council to her open book theater performances, and I invited Councilperson Rodriguez to spend an evening with me there to check it out, and um, we had a great time, and the theater is just a, a gem, and if you haven't had an opportunity to go, I would highly encourage you taking advantage of um, those free tickets to us, complimentary, so that we can tell the community about it. Um, they have several fundraisers there. They need money to help um, repair their roof. So, um, you know, we made substantial donations so that that could happen. Um, and thanks to having us come see the uh, show. The season, I think, is over for now. Um, they're going to regroup. They're doing driveway theaters. You can have them perform in your driveway for yeah. your neighborhood. Maybe you're going to have a, a block party and you can invite them and uh, they would do a performance for you. So um, even though their season in person is, you know, over, you can still do things throughout the summer with them to support them, and we are happy to have them in town. Um, and I think, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of what else I'm forgetting. Um, but I, I think I'll pass the torch. So thank you very much, go go ahead. Councilman Perugia. Thank you. Yes, I I just like to say, Tim, thanks for your hard work. I hope it goes well for you. I hope some of the weather holds out, most particularly Saturday. <laughs> um, outside of that, I would just like to say happy anniversary to my wife, and uh, I have nothing else. Oh, so that's why you want us to move the council meeting tonight. <laughs> yeah, because it actually is on Juneteenth, my anniversary. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that makes more sense than darn it, my joke backfired. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Um, Thank you, Councilman, uh, and happy anniversary to you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Capowan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a reminder to those of you that the Wayne County Senior Fest is this weekend in Hines Park at Nankin Mills. So um, there's, I've never been there, but I will be there this weekend, and it sounds like it's going to be quite the party. So um, that Saturday, I believe it starts at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 or 10 in the morning. So um, that is uh, coming up this weekend. Also, want to uh, especially thank the folks over at the Cultural Center. Um, all the different groups, uh, Tim, that are over there working on the center every every Saturday and I think on Tuesdays as well. Just um, whether it's the community garden or it's um, just working on the grounds, it's it is really a, a beautiful place. Um, 
you know, our family loves going over there and hanging out, and uh, Connor especially loves running around the uh, the grounds there with a seven year old son. It's uh, it's a great place to take somebody and just let them run around, run all the energy out. So, uh, Tim, please extend our uh, appreciation to those uh, respective parties over there. And also, I wanted to say, Tim, thank you for uh, um, as summer is here. Thank you for all the programming uh, that Parks and Rec does and all the opportunities. I know Connor signed up for uh, basketball this year as well as, um, you know, Melissa take him to the pool during the day. And, uh, and again, opportunities to wear out the child. Um, also, uh, thank you to uh, Trenton High School and uh, the football team for uh, putting on their kids camp of kids football camp uh, he's enrolled in that as well and it's uh, it's kind of cool to see him uh, do those things and, and with all the kids in the community so I uh, just wanted to thank those people tonight mayor and that's all I have good thank you councilman councilwoman Rodriguez oh, good evening everyone so first of all I'd like to say um, great job on the pool so I popped in yesterday and did a walkthrough with Samantha and it was really awesome they were getting ready for the the first group coming through before one o'clock, so that was really great. And I got my wonderful summer cup with my slushie. Um, and also I wanted to thank Krista Eubanks of the Open Book Theater. Wonderful play, wonderful play on Friday. That was really great. And that's all I have. Good, thank you, Councilwoman. You're welcome. Councilwoman Von Crooks. Uh, yeah, I have to um, congratulate the Midsummer Festival for a great job they're doing for us this year. And also Tim Beaker, your group too. And I, you know, I hope everyone enjoys the weekend here. And people come to all, not only the street fair, but all, to all the business people too down there that, you know, get a little extra kick with all the people. So, that's great. And uh, just look forward to a great weekend. And that's about it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Benedetti. Well, first off, let me congratulate Saint Lisa for her anniversary yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> And then also to uh, the department heads, dean, HR, everybody for um, we finished our contracts. And I can tell you, it's record time. I lived through it for many years. So you guys are doing something right to get the employees to buy into the program we're trying to run here. And I think they're happy with what they get and um, what you're offering them. It brings back the employees to the city and I think it's going to change it and make it so it's a place that people want to come again like when I came here there was you know a hundred and some people that applied for 20 jobs and I think that's a great thing and I'm glad the council here realizes that we have to pay our employees to be here offer benefits benefits for them to be here because they show up when we need them so I think it's a great thing that everybody has done including them and the rest of the board here um, also, good luck, Tim. Hopefully, it'll hold out for you and it won't rain, and you know, it'll be a good time for you. Tell your family hello. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks, Mayor. Good. Thank you, Councilman. We'll go to our other elected officials. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have anything? Sure. I, I'll just mention that City Hall will be closed on Tuesday, July 4th, and our next council meeting will be on Wednesday, July 5th at 7 p.m. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam Assessor, do you have anything for us this evening? Oh. Oop, can't hear you, but it sounds like you're all set. All right, cool. <laughs> Good enough. All right, our treasurer, Mr. McCullough. <laughs> right. Sounds like something we'll have to work out for next time, but good. <laughs> I like the thumbs up. Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll go to our department heads. Do we have any department heads who wish to say anything? Uh, probably in person and not on the Zoom. So. <laughs> Chief Hawkins. Well, it's been mentioned uh, already, the summer festival and fireworks parking. Um, this is a big event, um, and it is no different on Friday and Sunday as it has been in the past. Saturday is going to be much different. Um, we have to look out for the safety of many pedestrians and the festival. So at 8.30 at night, there'll be a hard closure coming into downtown from West Road, from Harrison, and from King Road. Those will be manned by officers. The only way into downtown from there would be Van Horn to West Jefferson, and we're going to direct people into Elizabeth Park from that way for additional parking. We've spoken to the county already. The deputies will be in there. Um, so my suggestion is 
go online, go on Facebook. I see the city has posted it. The department has posted the parking restrictions. We'll have additional handicap parking on St. Joe's, but uh, familiarize yourself with the uh, parking. And if there are any questions, you can call the police department. Uh, handheld flyers we passed out starting tonight to all residents downtown and businesses so there should be no confusion but i'm sure there will be so um direct them to the police department not city hall we'll, we'll deal with all the parking problems down there thank you thank you very much chief appreciate it hi everyone uh, as we are, I'm sorry I was late this evening. We were actually doing some finishing touches on the festival. So, um, but we are excited for this weekend. As uh, Chief Hawkins said, there will be a lot of parking and um, some movement of traffic uh, throughout the area throughout the weekend. But with that, it brings quite excitement and the best festival ever. That's our goal this year. So, um, it is not going to rain, uh, as some people keep thinking but it is gonna be nice overcast and keep it cool down there for everybody to wander throughout the event and enjoy themselves and not be overheated. That's the goal. And if we get a little bit of mist, it just helps everybody cool off. Um, the fireworks are scheduled for Saturday night, 10 o'clock shoot off. Uh, we will be having um, bands playing up till 10 o'clock. After 10 o'clock, they will take a break, come back on at 10.30. So make sure to enjoy your entire evening down there um, and take your time before you have to rush against the traffic to leave downtown. Um, vendors will be open from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. on Friday, Saturday, and 10 to 6 on Sunday. So uh, look forward to seeing everybody down there and enjoy themselves. On top of that, please come visit the pool. The pool did open yesterday. Um, another exciting adventure going on. And uh, I appreciate all the accolades directed towards myself and the department, but uh, it truly, both events, the pool opening and the, the festival is brought to you by the city of Trenton and every single person that works for the city has had some part in it. So I appreciate everyone's help and everything that has gone into it. And we're looking forward to kicking off a great summer. Great, great. Thank you. great job, Tim. Yeah, go ahead, Councilwoman. Um, I'd like to ask a question about the shuttle. Yes. Um, did you expand the shuttle drop-offs, or are we still um, shuttling just to City Hall? Can you so, get an update on that? Yes, we will also, the intention is to uh, potentially have a shuttle stop also at Truax and, and Jefferson. So um, we will be doing that as well. We will have up to three shuttles running on Saturday evening. Um, there will be two shuttles running the rest of the weekend. So. Great. Anyone else? Thanks a ton in advance, Tim. Thank you, Appreciate guys. Appreciate it. At any of our other department heads? Nope. I believe this is Karen's last um, meeting. She's on vacation that week, so a week of Fourth of July. Oh, she's on vacation. Okay. Well, I gotta say it now then. Yeah. I uh, didn't know till just now, but I think we all deserve, uh, our city controller deserves a round of applause. Her last uh, council meeting here. <laughs> Decided to go on vacation for the next one, but uh, well, I'll save a big spiel for later, but just Karen, I'll never be able to say thank you enough. We appreciate you very much. So uh, I don't think you're going that far. Don't worry. <laughs> so we're keeping you close. So. <laughs> We'll find a way. Uh, uh, so we'll go to public comment now. Um, if anyone's wishing to speak, it has to begin with your name and address. Please direct all questions through me, and please limit your comments to five minutes. Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion so to moved. adjourn. And moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered for adjournment at 8.18 p.m.